and 330 or 340 studies show that women are at least as physically aggressive towards intimate partners um, as, as men. Sorry, or, or are you saying are you saying that there are as many cases of women being violent towards men in a relationship as there is as there are men? Yes, it's, it's, it's long been known. It's long been known. Uh, say 330 studies, you know, which 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 have been collected by Professor Martin Fiebert at the University of California, Long Beach. It's, it's, it's true across the developed world, and it's true in this country. It, it's known from, from crime surveys, from, or the Crime Survey of England and Wales more recently, um, that men suffer, um, su suffer violence at, at the same sort of levels and at the same severity as, as women. And yet, and yet the support for men, for male victims of domestic violence, is virtually zero. Mm. And again, it's another driver of the high male suicide rate. Okay, so Caroline, you... you quickly said there. I mean, um, where, the where, to begin, feathers, but where to begin, Mike? Um, I suppose with it, when it comes to violence, you know, the problem with, with that is that it's, <laughs> it's hard to know how to engage with it because it's just not true. Um, men commit about 96%... reports, he says. Men commit about 96% of violent crime in the UK. Um, so that's just crime statistics. I don't really know how you can argue with that. Um, with regards to... With rega I'm coming on to domestic violence. Don't worry, Mike. Um, with regards to domestic violence, you know, for example, um, a woman was killed every 2.38 days by a male partner uh, in, the, in the UK. Um, we just don't have those figures happening for men. Women aren't killing men at that kind of rate. For example, between April and September last year, three women were beheaded by men in London alone. Again, women just aren't doing that. Now, this isn't to say that men are evil and women are just virtuous, wonderful angels. Um, feminists would argue that this is a terrible thing, that, that men are brought up to, to behave in this way and that it's hugely to do with the very high male suicide rate and that obviously that's something that feminists would want to, would want to campaign against. Um, with regards to custody, you know, f feminists aren't very happy about women being assumed to be primary, primary caregivers. That's actually something that feminists fight against. The problem is, currently in society, women are doing the vast majority of unpaid care work. If you look at the OECD figures from, I think, 2012, um, when men are the male earners, this is looking at heterosexual couples, when men are the male earners, women are doing the vast majority of unpaid care work, fair enough. Uh, when they're both sort of equal earning, women are still doing the majority. Um, and it's only when m women are the main earners in the household that they even pull equal so that men and women are doing the same amount. So th that's really more the reason why women are being awarded custody. It's because they're still having to do the majority of the care work. I would be very, very happy if Mike wanted to start a campaign, men for housework, men for childcare, really get in there, get their hands dirty, change those nappies, and, you know, then they'll start getting more, more custody. Women, feminists aren't pro-women being considered, you know, natural caregivers. Why, uh, why, why did, what, no, why did, uh, why did uh, you, you present her with, uh, with the award Lying Woman of the Month? Well, um, with, uh, Caroline, didn't I get it twice? Caroline's, so, won, Caroline's won two of them. I'm yeah, sure she'd be many proud congratulations. of that. But I haven't the, won the whiny woman of the month yet, which I'm have. quite obsessed. No, oh, no. yes. Uh, <laughs> Caroline has won. Uh, originally, we called them whiny women of the month awards. And, oh, are they the same one? And, and then, and then, no, no. I thought they were and, two categories. And, and uh, um, well, we, no, we started off with lying feminists. I'm not. I don't care what's yeah. no, no, okay. Why did she get it? Why did she get it? She she got it because she called it because she lied. I lied. This was nearly two years ago. She called into a radio station and lied about the impact of having more women on boards. And more recently, she lied about the proportion... On corporate boards. On corporate boards. Yeah. And more recently, she, 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 she lied on the New Statesman uh, online website. It was, it was later taken down, but, but it was captured, uh, c claiming that uh, domestic violence was a major cause of death of women. And it's, it's just... It's a, it's a radical feminist lie. And, and, and you know, if, 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 you, if you, you know, deal with this stuff as much as I do, you realise that virtually everything that comes out of, uh, out, out of radical feminists you know, they are either conspiracy theories, fantasies, lies, delusions or myths. And you're not in this series? No, I had my little girl in the March and then they started filming in the April and I really wanted to take a good solid maternity leave so it fell exactly at the wrong point really.